Thank you so much. And I think I did it seamlessly. You can all see my screen here as we go. Yes, um, please do not panic. I'm originally an East Coaster and I talk very fast. So uh, you will have this recorded. The links will be shared in any way we can. And I found out on Friday that my text actually won the 2021 AJN Book Award for the category of history and public policy. So I'm thrilled and I want to say three quarters of the authors were Canadians. So very exciting. Thank you. Um, in BC, it is our tradition to uh, acknowledge the land that I'm working on, and I am grateful to live and work on the occupied traditional ancestral and unceded lands of the Semiamu, Musqueam, Tsleil-Waututh, Stolo, and Squamish nations of the Coast Salish peoples. I'm actually located in Blaine, Washington at the moment and looking across at White Rock. So it actually inhabits all of those nations in some way, shape, or form. And the other thing I need to disclose are um, just areas where funding comes from. The organizations that I'm involved with, Can Health and Cyber Patient, and some of the education I do. My other forte is simulation and uh, virtual learning and that type of thing. But I do not intend to discuss any unimproved investigative use of commercial products or devices in my presentation. You will see bits about books and links, but I try to focus on the open access materials. The other thing that I have begun since the pandemic and probably before is to ask you all to pause for a minute and just take a couple of deep breaths in and out. I know I usually need to because I get off and running and excited about presenting and um, just acknowledge this moment in time that we find ourselves in. Uh, Carol and I have been having some discussions because in BC we're seeing similar lack of resources for our breastfeeding families and Give a kudos out to all of you on the front line, to all of you entering the profession, doing research in it. It is so important and key. I am preaching to the choir. We all know that breastfeeding is a global issue and we are all here to protect it to the best of our ability. And as you know, nothing is ever done in isolation. So what you may not know about me is that um, I am a woman's health nurse practitioner from the East Coast. I was fortunate to work with Dr. Christina Smiley in her breastfeeding resource practice in Stratford, Connecticut for 10 years um, and have whole hosts of colleagues. And what I love about lactation is its interprofessional nature. So uh, it, so I really do need to acknowledge a faculty of applied science at the University of British Columbia, because without them and the resources and support I've received from them, I would not be here speaking with you right now. I also need to acknowledge those folks who were involved with the open education resources I'm sharing with you today. And this is a list of some of the medical illustrators, Dr. Claudia Krebs, um, who's a physician teaching in our anatomy and physiology department. If you have not found her anatomy website yet, you need to. Um, my group of open education resources are under the breast and lactation, but she has created an amazing team in Hive. Um, and all of these products that we're making are open access. And also a shout out to my uh, student who is applying to medical school as we speak, um, who undergrad helped me with the website. This was a presentation we did for the critical inquiry uh, research group on campus. And it just gives you a snapshot of these open education resources and some of the strength of this lactation research team that I have at UBC right now. Our focus is really reproductive social justice. We feel that every family has the right to provide their children with the gold standard of food. And often it is the lack of support that they get from our healthcare system and others that they, they uh, find themselves in. I do want to warn you all, as my sense is this is a majority of physicians here, that the one comment I've gotten on these open education resources from physicians is it's too simplistic and it's too basic and uh, wait, I need to know more about and when do I supplement formula and um, the intent of this was to provide 
five baseline foundational education, as you said, with that Twitter feed, we need everyone to be talking the same language and have resources that are best practice standards. Um, as Megan mentioned, uh, the core curriculum, we just got the, all 32 chapters in the end of December. It is being revamped with super case studies. So, and the colleagues that are providing in-depth teaching notes for those case studies, I think it's going to be an even better uh, model. These open education resources, we had a whole team from nursing, physiotherapy, midwifery, and medicine, and we had graduate students helping us to wireframe these stories. The methods we used were storytelling and narrative workshops, and we identified learning objectives for each of the scenarios and then um, had an interdisciplinary team focus on it. There were many factors that helped contribute to the success of it, and it was basing it on the baby-friendly initiative steps, using the love trauma-informed method of motivational interviewing, identifying with green flags and red flags when students may want to uh, get more information. And we started with just the physiology of lactation, which again is very basic level, but we moved into creating four modules with different and diverse families and practitioners and traveled people through from a prenatal guidance component to a C-section nursing right after in the hospital. We have a midwife, um, Kim Campbell, who helped us with that one. And then an effective breastfeeding, which is about two to three days with early nipple. So it's more of a latch component. And then the fourth one is questionable low milk supply. So we were really able to provide all the non-pharmacological things that need to be assessed and evaluated at milk supply levels. So that's a quick thing today. I just hope to provide you the resources and links, give you some of those basic background information around um, how through these modules, we are helping healthcare practitioner students and practitioners, and we even have some parents going to these sites to navigate some of the common breastfeeding challenges, think about the questions that they might ask, and for the students using it as a learning tool to actually kind of participate in um, how they might respond in that situation. We know breastfeeding is the biological norm for our infants, but it does exist in this social construct of the world that we find our families living in. And our goal is to have this um, use lactation in a global context as the initial health promotion and a foundational component to health promotion. And we all know that the sooner we get that in front of policymakers and the benefits to health overall, uh, globally will be important. Just included for you, we've been at this a long time and I've been at the table as an RN since 1983 and watched the evolution of all this, but we have tools and resources now where we can start moving this forward. We know that taking this person-centered public health approach is important. Each family is within a unique situation. Success is um, attainable for sure, but they need references and, and advice and referrals at the moment that they need it. And the messaging that we provide for them can really help it. So in these open education resources, we work to include the parents' voices we're advocating for increased focus on diversity. We know that you know duration is important, not just exclusivity. And we're looking at what resources need to be allocated, not just in our birthing facilities, but in our communities as well. How can we link this to other causes? We know that um, there are specific other areas where parents need support if they're going to be successful. I'm focusing on education of administrators, health professionals, and paraprofessionals and improving the curriculum in our healthcare programs. And I think in identifying these best practice standards of care, it will help to lead to um, good education. So we did a scoping review prior to 
uh, developing these modules. And what we found was that the lactation education for healthcare professionals is not well uh, provided. It is drop in piecemeal. We also know that clinical simulation is a new tool that we can use. And that social context of lactation requires students' ability to assess their own experience, attitudes, and components related to breastfeeding. So how might we apply um, this to an experiential learning component what we did was use these open education resources as pre-briefing, allowing students to go through the self-directed learning. And then because the pandemic hit, we brought them into a telehealth virtual simulation environment with a standardized patient and did health counseling that way. And we had medical students, nursing and midwifery students together in that room. We know there are key issues for assessment areas, and those have been incorporated into the open education modules, but we're keeping in the back of people's minds that they need to assess what social determinants of health are involved in this as well. We used the simulation models. I'm really sad to say that um, Anna is not selling these any longer. I don't know. We have four at UBC and I'm going to treasure and care for them. They've been incredible for um, our education methods. But I have to say, you know, this picture here with Lactessa, this is a little Brazilian almost puppet thing that we ordered from a little village that my colleague Nicole was in. So there are ways to do it without it. It's just the clinical skills, especially for physicians and nurse practitioners was helpful. These are components of the open educational resources. I mentioned the deliberative narrative, case studies and visual approaches that we use and that we made it as diverse and inclusive as possible. We use the storytelling method. So we develop the learning objectives up front. And this was a team of about 20 people run through patient voices. First Nations Health was involved in getting feedback from everyone as we built it, and then had the simple components of meeting the patients and following them through as they went. The final product included comprehensive diagrams and components that students and practitioners could relate to, and little active things that as they pushed buttons or clicked on numbers, it gave them more information. And then at the end, we included summary checklists so that they could think about whether they had met the objectives for that. I mentioned the innovative experiential learning, incorporating simulations does help for students to then embed the information that they've gotten. And we know that these virtual and telehealth components are working well. As I mentioned, we use this as pre-briefing examples, and I've given you some links to other examples in nursing. We have built through the Canadian uh, Alliance of Nurse Educators um, multiple virtual health simulations. And I do want to do a quick shout out that I'm working with Dr. Karim Kayumi at CyberPatient and Can Health International. And he just got a huge grant from the space agency. And he, because I've been bugging him for six years, is going to develop 10 lactation case scenarios. So I would love to tap into this group to have you be part of any part of that process you would like to do. I just got approved for my study leave for September and I'm teaching free up until July. So I am going to be working full time on these. Um, as I said, I'm a simulation guru, so there's a lot of aspects to this I'd love to share with you at another point in time. And the debriefing is key. You need uh, folks that can help with that. Some of the future research that my team is working on, and basically we know lactation is health promotion with global health implications, respectful care is important, and the better we can role model to our students and practitioners ways to work with parents to support their infant feeding goals, whatever those might be, are the ways that we can be successful. And the rest are resources. I think I went over by a moment or two um, with all the links and other components and 
there's lots of ways that we can think about uh, how these might be used and how we can take a strengths based approach to health promotion for our lactation support. And that's it. Wow. So much packed in there. Thank you, Suzanne. This is amazing and super timely given the, the discussion already today about developing learning tools for um, healthcare professionals. I see lots